In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the hardest lessons that you can learn in day trading. Guys, this is coming from someone who's been day trading on and off uh, as a hobbyist, as an amateur day trader for a very long time. Um, I've traded my own cash. I've traded, uh, traded using prop firm accounts. I'm currently trading a 150K uh, Top Step Trader Funding simulated challenge on Tradebate so I can trade using Trade, uh, TradingView. Um, so guys, I'm not a, a licensed financial advisor, but I'm someone who's been through quite a bit of trading experience now. And I am confident in saying that, that I know what some of my mistakes are and I know what some of the common mistakes are and why most people fail at day trading, including, including in the past, you know, why I've also, so I'm in on that. Okay, guys, if you like this content, if this is something that interests you and you want to support me to make sure I can keep making videos like this, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And please make sure to sign up for Top Step Trader Funding, Apex Trader Funding, or The Trading Pit, or American Blue, Blue Cash Preferred Credit Card, 6% cash back on groceries, guys. It's a pretty good deal. Um, by using the affiliate links in the description box below, guys. Again, those affiliate links really help me out. Um, make sure that I can keep this channel going, keep, keep making videos, keep making content. Okay, guys. Um, the number one hardest lesson I think in day trading is learning that no strategy is, is foolproof guys whether it's ICT whether it's using a MACD crossover moving average crossover seasonal tendencies the hardest thing to learn is that no pure technical strategy and no pure fundamental strategy is ultimately going to bring you the results that you want the market is driven by a combination of technical and fundamental patterns it's driven in part on a day-to-day -day basis by high-frequency trading algorithms and by quantitative models. And it's also driven on a macro basis from news releases, fundamental, uh, fundamental factors, interest rates, and geopolitical events. So there are so many variables that go into the pricing model that you can't say that any one particular strategy works. What I will say, guys, from my experience in day trading is you need to use a combination of both, okay? As a day trader, it's important that you're in the charts every day, that you get familiar with what price action looks like around, you know, using the instruments that you're familiar with, watching the charts in uh, day in and day out, because as a day trader, you should be familiar with these little intraday volatility movements. In fact, that's what the IRS defines as day trading. So understanding how the, the market moves in these really nuanced ways uh, really comes from chart experience. But guys, technical, in my opinion, and this is not a professional opinion, it's in my layman opinion, not, not financial advice. Guys, in my opinion, the number one thing you should learn is that no strategy is foolproof and you should use a combination of fundamental and technical analysis. So I used to think that uh, you know, price action is king, and I still believe that price action is king, but let me be very clear, price action is not everything. Um, if you are trading the futures markets, if you're trading the ES, NQ, crude oil, Australian dollar, live cattle, wheat, Canadian dollar futures, whatever you are trading, um, there are fundamental factors, economic data, uh, market sentiment, Fed speak, Bank of Japan speak, as there are fundamental factors that go into the market. And if you are completely illiterate, as in you are purely trading on price action, I don't believe at this point in time, from my, my current experience and my, uh, my opinion day trading, guys, price action is not enough. You do need to be reading, keeping up with your news, keeping up with your fundamentals, having an idea of what the current market sentiment and what overall the market narrative, let's say the market narrative is. Guys, you should know that for the most part, the market's driven by the Fed. It's driven by the, our largest banking institutions, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup. Um, it's driven by, by capital inflows, capital outflows, insurance companies, uh, mutual funds. It's, it's not driven by little day traders, okay? It's driven by big funds, and it's driven by the Federal Reserve. And if you have no idea what the street is saying, so to speak, like what the, the latest chatter is, that you don't have any sort of background on what the, what the market sentiment is. And you should have that. Okay, guys, these markets are not driven completely randomly. They're driven by the market sentiment, by fundamental data.
okay, and, and by technicals and price action, high frequency trading algorithms. So guys, it's a harmony of both, all right? If you're using some sort of technical analysis, so for example, you see I have Bollinger Bands on my chart, but I'm also very familiar with, with different price action concepts, um, chart patterns, ICT. Don't rely on that alone. Get familiar with, with market fundamentals. Okay, guys, so really, I think the, my number one piece of advice here and one of the hardest lessons to learn is no strategy is foolproof. And if you are discretionary trading, if you're clicking a button and not using an automated system, then you need to be familiar with both price action on a technical level, but you also need to be reading up on your news, keeping up on the market chatter, keeping up with market sentiment. What is the word on the street? If you don't know that, you're not informed. So guys, price action, although it is king, the king needs his gesture. His gesture. He needs his court, guys. So again, price action, in my opinion, is, is not enough. Okay, price action is not enough by itself. Okay, guys, um, number two, yeah, it's the hardest, uh, one of the hardest lessons you have to learn is to let your, to let your winning trades run and to, be, and to put in those break-even stops and allow yourself to be stopped out over and over and over again, guys. You're never going to have the kind of returns that you want if you don't allow your winners to run, if you keep choking your trades. And what you're going to find, guys, is that when the market, like it is here on Friday and it often is on Mondays, when the market is in a, a trading range or it's in a consolidating mood, choppy trading, you're just going to be stopped out a lot. Um, that is sort of the nature of the beast. And unless you're running a high-frequency trading algorithm um, or you have some model that purely focuses on these sort of trading ranges, you need to let your trades run. You need to try and go for those big wins. This is all, again, my opinion, not, not financial advice, just my opinion. Guys, you got to try and let your, your winners run. So you might have some days where you break even, you lose a little bit of money, um, and you, you might have very few days, like once every two weeks, where you make a lot of money. Guys, this is not a sort of a regular income kind of job. So one of the hardest lessons is when you have a winning trade and you put in your break-even stop, which you should be using stops and then stop losses and then break-even stops, Guys, you got to try and let your winners run. I know that it's very easy to take your profit, but taking your profit, ultimately what it's doing is it is also low. You're, you're having, you're taking, a, it's opportunity cost. You are taking money off the table and now you have a 0% chance of accruing more. And guys, it's very difficult to predict, if not impossible to predict, when the market's going to have a big move. Um, that's why there's quant firms out there. I mean, even quant firms don't know exactly when the market's going to make its big moves. Um, my point being, guys, is that you don't need a high strike rate. You just need to let your winners run. And it's one of the hardest things to do. In fact, I would say it's harder to let your winners run and let it come back and pull back on you and not take the trade off and, and allow yourself to be stopped out after you had a profit. I would say that that feeling of I didn't capture my profit, I, I, I let it run, which is the right thing to do. Um, but you're going to get stopped out, break even quite a bit. And guys, that sucks. That feeling sucks. It's very hard um, because you feel like you, you know, you've lost something. But guys, the mathematics are very simple. You don't need to have a very high strike rate, but you need to have some big winners. And if you're not letting your trades run, if you're taking your profit too soon, which I don't know what too soon is. I, there's no hard and fast rule to say when is too soon. But if you, if you know for a fact that you are just the kind of guy or woman that is just taking your trades off, you're not, you're choking them, you're, you're taking scalps, not allowing your trades to run. In my opinion, guys, that's a mistake, and you know that that's a mistake. You have to let these trades run after you put in that break-even stop, understanding that there's going to be pain involved, guys. There's going to be pain, very hard pain, uh, when, you, when it does come back and stop you out break-even, which it's oftentimes going to do. Okay, guys, number three, one of the hardest lessons is understanding how the, the day trading model, the, the business model works. And... The trading model is very simple, guys. Most of your income is going to be made on a, f a small number of days. Uh, it's it's not like a nine to five job. It's not a salaried position. Um, although I think you can regularly turn a profit day trading. You have no idea what your profit or loss really is going to be for the day, uh, except if you have a maximum loss limit. You know <laughs> how much you can lose. Um, but you don't 
you don't have a cap to the upside. So you don't you don't know if you're going to make 200, 300, 400 dollars or more. You have no idea. Um, if you're allowing your trades to run, if you're doing the right thing, putting in the break-even stops, and then really allowing them to come back and take out your position often and repeatedly while knowing that there's a, a chance that your trade's going to keep running and running and running in your favor, well, guys, then you're going to have one, two, or you're going to have a few days of the, of the entire year, really, let's be honest. If we're speaking honestly of the entire year where theoretically most of your income is going to come from. And that's that's why really you should have like multiple sources of income. You should be doing multiple things because day trading is, in my opinion, it's very difficult for someone who's used to, and, and this is coming from me as well, guys, even contracting um, or having a salary position, it's very nice and comforting to know, hey, this is what I'm making, this is what I have, and this is what I'm going to be making tomorrow. Uh, this is what I have on this contract or this is what I have on my salary. That's just not how day trading works. Um, trading, you, you're you going to have all your income really in a very small number of days, even though I think you can regularly make profits. Um, really, most of your profits gonna, is going to come in those small bursts. And that's, that's a very tough thing. Very tough thing. But ultimately, guys, you can have a very high income day trading, but it's just the times at which you make it, it might come in one, two, three. Maybe you might make your whole year in one day. That's just how the math of, of this works out. Okay, guys. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is if you're using a top step trader funding or an apex trader funding and you're using like I am a 150,000 simulated account, you've got to make $9,000 without losing $3,000 in a day. Um, and apex trader funding has its own challenges, which are similar to that. Guys, the average American makes about $55,000 a year, which is less than $200 in a day. So one of the things that you should you should realize is that if you take take the game that you're playing day trading right now take the game that you're playing and now you have to make a certain x number of dollars in order to pass your challenge okay and then you have to make at least two hundred dollars in a day five days to get a payout okay let's take that out of let's take that out of the equation for a second and get grounded in um, what like what the you know, average incomes are and what you can expect. Guys, if you are making $200 in a session, $300, $400, even on your fake simulated accounts, which I recommend a simulated or a prop firm account, especially starting out. Guys, as long as you understand that five, six hundred dollars one thousand dollars fifteen hundred you don't need to push it. Um, like, for example, on Top Step, if you have the biggest account, you can pass the challenge with two days of $4,500. Guys, you don't have to push it, push it, push it. Um, if you make a thousand fake dollars in a day, that's really good. That's way higher than the average American income. Um, if you want to look at it that way, so you make five hundred, six hundred dollars, guys. Don't feel discouraged just because you have more days to go. Uh, if you're trading a fake account, don't feel discouraged. That's one of the reasons why these prop firms make the money that they do is, is that they know a little bit about how the psychology work works. Um, remind yourself what you're comparing it to the average american income is about 100 to 200 dollars a day okay especially people that are on unemployment social security whatever medicare medicaid um most people aren't making four or five six hundred dollars in a day so if that's what you are making in your simulated accounts regularly that's fine you don't need to keep opening up and closing positions and risking your your realized profit because you feel like you haven't made enough guys 600 700 you know, it's really a lot. It's really a lot to make in a single day, okay, compared to what the average income is in the United States. So what I'm trying to say is that if even if you have to make 9,000 fake dollars, guys, just take your time. Be patient. It's not going anywhere. You're ultimately going to save yourself a lot of heartache um, if you are ground yourself in reality. Okay, guys, my next item is going to kind of tie into my last item, and that is sizing, guys. Sizing is one of the most difficult things, I think, in day trading because it's hard to get right without having a lot, without having good experience. Um, you have to minimize what's called your risk of ruin. So, for example, if you're trading a top step 150K account, you've got a 3,000 daily loss limit. That's 150 NASDAQ points, which is not a lot, okay? So you're trading something like the NASDAQ or the NQ futures, and you're trading the full-size NASDAQ, guys, you can blow out your account just like that. Um, it's really volatile. You have to kind of understand what volatility is. Um, even crude oil is a really big contract 
Uh, Copper futures are a big contract, guys. Don't be afraid to trade the micros. Um, don't be a tr be afraid to trade one contract if you're going to trade a full size contract. Um, getting the sizing right, guys, it's always smaller than what you want it to be. Let me just put it that way. Um, trading less volatile instruments like the ES over the NQ is an option. Um, but understanding what the size of these contracts are, they're really big. They're really big contracts, guys. These are things that banks trade um, that have really access to mil many millions of dollars in capital. And so trading your little prop, your prop account, your SIM account, where you've only got a limited loss limit, it's really difficult, guys, I know. But don't be afraid to take a month, two months, take three months to pass your challenge, okay? Just take your time, be patient, get the sizing right. If you're going to trade full-size contracts, trade one contract. Um, be careful trading the full-size NQ. That's another message that I have specifically. Um, I have already had and decided I just stick to the micro NASDAQ, even though I'm trading Top Step's biggest account. My biggest Achilles heel are these, these full-size NASDAQs. So anyways, guys, getting your sizing right, and usually that's going to be a lot smaller than what you guys want it to be. Um, that's really important. Okay, guys, um, the, the last item, one of the hardest lessons you have to learn is learning when to stop. So realistically, guys, a lot of the markets do most of their movement in the morning. So if you're going to be trading for a living, uh, you need to be up in the morning in the pre-market session, in my opinion, you know, 5, 6 a.m., depending on where you live uh, in the world. So the New York Stock Exchange opens at 930 Eastern Standard. That's 830 Central Standard. 6.30 Pacific. Um, need to be up in the mornings, guys. The markets do most of their movement in the mornings, um, and that includes uh, Forex, energy, Energies, and Ags, guys. So really, although there, you know, there is movement in the afternoon session, especially when you have um, an FOMC speaker, the majority of the money in this game, in my opinion, is made in the pre-market and, and in the AM session. So you need to become a morning person, in other words. Now, if you're in Europe, if you're across the world, you're in different markets, that's not going to apply to you. But if you're in the United States, you're in Mexico and you're in Canada, um, and you're broadly speaking in Central or Eastern Standard Time, just got to get up regularly in the morning and treat it. If you have a full-time job or if you're contracting or whatever you're doing, um, you know, just get up in the morning, read your news, guys. One, one thing that I want to recommend to you and a hard lesson um, is read your news. So if you have a Bloomberg account or... I have a Bloomberg account, Financial Juice. You get your morning newsletter. Got to treat it like a job, guys, and don't just hit the charts without looking at your news. Remember this harmony thing where it's not all price action. Price action is king, but price action isn't everything. It's not the whole universe. You know, you should be familiar with what the, the word on the street is. And so, guys, my, my, I guess my word of advice is this is really a morning game. That's where most of the volatility is. Uh, in the pre-market and in the AM session. Not to say that the futures markets don't move during Asia or during the London session. They do, but in my personal opinion, you, need, you just need to become a morning person and treat this like a regular job. Okay, guys, so to recap, uh, the number one hardest lesson in day trading is that no one strategy is perfect, okay? No one strategy is foolproof. Uh, technical, technical analysis is very important, guys. Uh, as a day trader, you should really become familiar with volatility, with moving averages, um, with some of your, with price action models. If it's ICT or if it's another price action model, you should have a, a, a grounding and an understanding of chart patterns, double tops, double bottoms, um, market liquidity, resting above and below prior lows. But that's not everything. You also need to be clued in on the squawk, on the, the word on the street. I recommend Financial Juice, Reuters, Bloomberg, and then also, guys, market news here on TradingView is important. So, guys, you need a full, a balanced, a well-rounded approach. That's the only way, in my opinion, you're going to get this thing done and get it done consistently, get it done professionally, is understanding that you need both a strong technical background and a strong fundamental background, which if any of you watching this have a Master's of Business Administration or... Uh, you, you, you have an economics degree. You already know that. If you're just a, a guy off the street, you have, you know, none of this makes a lot of sense to you. Get familiar, guys. Take a course. Learn about economics. Learn about interest rates. Learn about the things, you know, seasonal tendencies that are driving ag agriculture, oil, for example. You know, just take the time to self-educate, guys, okay, if you're not familiar with economics. 
Um, number two, you got to let your winners run, guys. And this is this is my second point. This is the hardest thing, in my opinion. You know, allowing your losses to run and then feeling terrible is pretty easy, to be honest with you. You're pretty comfortable if you've blown a lot of accounts before. If you've lost a lot of money trading then you know it's pretty easy just to give up and say, okay, well, I'm just going to let it run to my loss limit. The hardest thing is to allow your winners to run. It's not to let your losses run, guys. I mean, just blowing your account is easy enough. I, I hate to say it that way, but just blowing up an account, a million people blow accounts. 90% of accounts are blown. So it's that's the easy thing to do. The hardest thing to do is to allow your winners to run, to let them keep running in your favor and to let your break-even stops work and understanding that you don't have to have a high strike rate. That's the hardest thing. You know, 25, you can have a 10, 20, 30% strike rate. You can lose more trades than you win, but if you're allowing your, your winners to run and understanding how this game is played, which is most of your money is going to be made one, two, three days of the year. It's not a regular income kind of job. Number three, understanding the how the day trading business model works, guys. This goes back into number two, allowing your winners to run, understanding how the math of this works, and then allowing yourself to be subject to the mathematics of this game. It's very difficult emotionally. I'm not going to lie to you. I think it's overcomable. It's doable. That's why there are, in fact, professional day traders. But it's rare because that's not how our mind likes to work. We want regular income. We want the steady income. That's why we salary, contracts. Whatever we're doing, we want that that feeling of safety and security. That's not day trading. Um, day trading, you're going to make a lot of your income just one, two, three days of the year. It's, it's going to come very sporadically because you don't know when the market's going to make big moves. But if you're following a process of allowing your break-even stops to work, allowing your stops to actually stop you out, you're going to get rewards, guys. Those when those mar when the market makes a big move, you're going to be on on that big move. Number four, guys, I talked about this, is sizing, okay? Sizing, very difficult to master, but one thing, guys, I don't recommend adding on to your losers. If you have a winning trade, consider adding on to that. If you have a losing trade, cut it off and let it go. Um, that's going to be another point that I want to ramble on about is amnesia. That's going to be number six. Okay. Um, I'm gonna keep going here, guys. I don't have a script. I did, I did kind of uh, make a sort of preparation list, but I don't have a script. Okay, guys. Um, so sizing is very difficult, but it is something that you can master based on the capital that you have. Don't be afraid to use the micros, guys. Stopping. Um, you need to understand the game that we're playing. The average American income is one hundred to three hundred dollars a day. Okay, annualized, that's about $55,000 a year. That's the average American income. If you're in California, New York, those, those numbers go way up. I understand that. Massachusetts, those numbers go up quite a bit. Um, but the money that you can make day trading, for the most part, is well above average incomes for most jobs. So if you're making five dollars $600 in your simulated account, be, be happy with that, guys. That's way more than most people make. And I know that right now it's hard to have, it's hard to see that reward because it might be on a, a SIM account, might be on a prop account. But guys, if you keep at it, you keep at it, you keep at it, you get your funding, you get your payout, you get your check. Um, so $600, $700, guys, is a lot. It's way more than the average American income. So don't be ashamed just because your challenge makes you make X amount of dollars. Be confident in your ability. Um, be confident in your ability to turn a profit. Okay, guys, um, and that's that's on that's on stopping. My next item I want to talk about in a hard lesson in trading is amnesia, or what I'm going to call amnesia. Amnesia is the ability to forget the last trade, um, understanding that no prior trade, not a single trade, affects another trade. Very difficult. Um, Easy to understand logically, difficult to uh, implement emotionally. Very easy to chase losses, very easy to um, have a winning day, go to a losing day, and then get emotional and chase back. Um, but guys, the, the hard math is this. You need to forget. Your last trade doesn't matter at all. Um, and that is, the, that is the mathematical truth. That is the Lord's truth, so to speak. Um, the gospel truth, you have to have amnesia. One trade does not affect another, not even in the slightest. 
Um, the only thing that matters is your process, your research, your price action analysis. These are the things that matter. The last trait does not matter at all whatsoever. So that, that's amnesia. Very difficult lesson to learn, something that takes a lot of time, repetition, and training. A lot of conditioning there. That's no trait affects another. Guys, my last lesson, uh, or, or hard, difficult lesson, is have confidence. Um, have confidence in your ability to trade, in your ability to read the charts, price action. If you have, uh, and to keep up with the news, guys, you need to have confidence in your trading if you're going to succeed. Not an easy thing to have. For many of you that have blown accounts, lost money, whatever, which is the majority of people that try to day trade, um, it's easy to lose confidence. Guys, you need to have confidence. You need to believe that you can get this done, that you can pass your challenge, that you can build income. And um, that's not easy to come by, but you need to have it. You need to have that irrational sort of self-belief that, hey, I know I'm going to get up. I'm going to do my research. going to read the squawk. Gonna gonna keep up with my price action, uh, keep up with price action, keep keep on the news, keep on the data. That, those are not easy things to to do, but if you have the confidence, you can get it done. So you need to have confidence, self belief. Okay, guys, um, my final you know this is not really a hard lesson, but this is going to be a bonus topic is um, have other sources of income. So whether that's passive investments, CDs, savings account, stocks, stock account that you don't day trade with, um, bonds, or if you're uh, contracting or you have salaried employment, guys, I don't recommend day trading being your sole source of income, even if it's your primary source of income. Um, have passive income come in, guys. Get a savings account, get a, get a bond, get a CD, have interest coming in. Uh, maybe go invest in property, go invest in um, a dividend paying stock, build up a build up a portfolio for passive income that doesn't rely on your day trading. That's my last piece of advice. Um, I think that's pretty, it's not financial advice, but I think it's pretty solid advice. Okay, guys, with that being said, these are the hardest lessons in day trading. No strategy is foolproof. Um, Make sure to let your winners run, although it's very difficult. Actually let your stops get hit. Actually let your break-even stops do their work. Um, the sizing is going to be difficult, guys. Remember, sizing is going to be very difficult to implement, but it's usually smaller than what you think it is. Um, make sure that you know when to stop. Understand what the average American income is, and if you're making $600, $700, that's great. That's way more than enough to live on. Amnesia. Um, you need to forget your last trade. Your last trade doesn't matter at all. The only trade that matters is the next trade or the trade that you're currently managing. The next item is make sure that you have confidence, guys. Make sure that you believe in yourself, that you can get this done, that you're going to implement price action and a fundamental strategy, so you're harmonizing those things. That's not going to be easy. Finally, the last item is have other sources of income, even if it's just an interest-bearing account like a savings account or a, uh, a CD or a a bond. Make sure that you do have other sources of income. Okay, that's going to be it. These are some of the lessons to learn in trading. I will be back later with another video recapping uh, the market for Friday, June 21st, 2024. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and use the affiliate links in the description box below. They really help me out.